guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to do a Q&A. So I asked you guys over on Snapchat and Instagram to send me over some questions. I didn't care what they were. I told you to ask me whatever you wanted. So I hope you guys get to know me a little bit more. It's really, really nice to actually be able to talk to you guys and answer whatever questions you have for me. Also, I do look very different right now. I'm wearing contact lenses. I'm constantly changing up my hair. I love changing my eye makeup. I love changing my eye color just to look different every day. So before I get into the Q&A, I just wanted to thank every single person that messaged me, that subscribed, that liked my video, that commented under my links, everything. And I'm so shook about it. I can't believe it. Like, I literally can't believe how everyone reacted to the first video. It was the nicest feeling in the world. I can't even describe it. So I asked you guys over on Snapchat and Instagram to ask me some questions. So I'm just going to go right through them and answer as many as I can. Everyone, by the way, was writing to me such lovely wee messages along with their questions. So thank you so much for that. So the first question is, can you remember your first makeup client and how did it turn out looking back now? I actually do remember. So I was training with Patty in Makeup Pro Store. I was still doing his academy. I went in and I was working on Saturday and it was my first day working in Makeup Pro Store so I thought I'd be going in and cleaning brushes but no, I had a full column. So I went in, never had a time frame for makeup before. I always took about two hours when we were doing the academy and working on each other. So I literally went in and I had like a half an hour slot. So I was thrown in the deep end for sure. My client, I remember she walked past Patty after and I was looking at Patty from the side eye being like please 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 let it be okay and I had forgot to powder her I had forgot to powder her so can you imagine what her base looked like because if I forgot to powder I clearly didn't bronze I clearly didn't blush I clearly didn't highlight because all of that comes after powder so god knows what she looked like it was a hen party full of women and I don't think she really noticed because she was having so much fun but Patty just came up to me and said did you powder her? So he made her come back and I had to powder her. I'm going through my screenshots really randomly and it's just went from makeup to are you single? Yes, I am single and I love being single. I literally just don't have time for a man. Let's be honest, they would have to get slotted into my diary. Okay, so the next question is, are you gonna have a regular weekly update day? Right now, I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna pressurize myself into creating content that I'm not happy with. I want every video that goes up to be a really, really well put together video. Once I get into the rhythm of it, I definitely will have set days. I wanna post more than once a week, but I just wanna take it as it goes at the minute just to see how I get on. Okay, so the next question is, how old were you when you first started makeup and how long did it take you to become good at it. So like I was saying, I've wanted to do makeup since I was extremely young. Back then, obviously, you all know, makeup wasn't as big as it is now. It definitely wasn't a job that was very common back then. Instagram wasn't a thing back then either, which is really, really hard to get into makeup when you don't have a platform like Instagram to promote yourself and also somewhere that you can look for inspiration. So the whole time I was at school, I wanted to do makeup. And I remember even being in the computer rooms at school and everyone was on YouTube cast and I did not care. I just did not want to go to university. I did not care about school. All I cared about was art. I was a massive art student. I was obsessed with painting and all I did in those classes where we were all doing UCAS was sit and look up makeup courses. I looked into courses in Dublin. I literally knew everywhere that had makeup courses. I was looking up celebrity makeup artists on Google. I just wanted to be a makeup artist so so bad but again it wasn't a thing and when I was at school the careers of advisors leaned me towards university to go to the art college so I did go do that. I studied art, I studied fashion, I also went and studied costume design so I knew I wanted to get into this industry in some way if it wasn't makeup. I knew straight away when I started studying fashion that it really wasn't the area that I wanted to be in. I really wanted to be in the makeup industry but I went on, I did my courses and even when this was all going on I still was looking at makeup courses. Daddy had took me down to Dublin twice to to go to the LA College of Creative Arts and also IADT, the college, it had a makeup course as well. So I literally had tried everywhere. So my mommy was actually talking to one of her friends and she had spoke about Patty. And at the time I'd actually never heard about the academy surprisingly. I think my heart was set 
on going to Dublin because that's where everything kind of goes on. But I took it into consideration and I then went and met up with Patty. At the time, I'd just been accepted into LA College of Creative Arts in Dublin and I was so excited to go, but I still didn't know and I was very, very young and going to Dublin at that age was a very, very big step. So we went to Patty's and we spoke to him. He basically told me to come to the academy and see if I was cut out for it, to see if I was good enough to be a makeup artist and that's what I done. So I really did just start into makeup properly and train properly when I started the academy. My phone's ringing. It's Emer. Hello? Okay, so just want to have you quickly before your Q&A. Um, I'm in the middle of it. You're in my video. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you are. Okay, so we're going to bid Marbella right now. You're in. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to book it right now. Like, if regardless if you said yes or if you said no, I was booking you on anyway. But I just thought I'd ring you, you know, on the off chance. Okay. Okay. I'm done with know. that. No, I'm in the middle of my Q&A. I need to go. No. Yes. Put us in it. Put us in it. You're in it. Thank you. Okay, I'm away. Yeah. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay. So for anyone that thinks the American accent is put on, there you go. We can't even help it. It's like actually a reaction when I answer the phone to just put on an American accent. And yeah. <laughs> So yeah, how long did it take to become good at it? You have to really grow as an artist and I know even now, I'm gonna look back in a year from now and look at my makeup and probably pick out so many different flaws, but that's the thing about makeup. It's constantly evolving and you're constantly growing as an artist and becoming better and better and more understanding of different parts of makeup and different products. So if you are starting off makeup, please just focus on yourself and focus on your own artistic ability. You will grow too, you will become better and better and better as long as you practice and really really work hard and if you want some motivation for that please go down my Instagram feed and look at my first photos. I thought I was amazing at makeup back then. I was atrocious. Atrocious. And I think it's absolutely amazing to start off as a makeup artist now because there's so many artists now that do one-to-one -one lessons that literally advance your skills within a couple of hours. YouTube is amazing. There's so many talented makeup artists on YouTube. There's so many looks that have been created and made into tutorials for you guys to go and learn step by step. Also, there's so many job opportunities out there. So I really think right now it takes way less time to evolve and to become better than what it would have back then when I was doing it. It. But I do think working in Makeup Pro Store and being around artists every single day and learning different things from each artist every day really, really helped me and made me a better artist. Okay, so someone asked me, do I wear hair extensions? Well, my hair didn't magically grow this length from my last video, so yes. I get my hair extensions done by a girl called Ashley in Belfast. I'll leave all her links down below. She's called Creative Links by Ashley on Facebook and she's amazing. Okay, so someone said, where did you study makeup and how did you manage to keep evolving and getting better and better as a professional makeup artist? P.S. Love your skills and everything you do. Keep up the good work. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much. Okay, so I've kind of answered some of that, but where did I study makeup? I have did a lot of different courses with different artists, but my main one was the nine week academy in Makeup Pro Store. I really think I should do a video solely focused on my makeup and career and just really helping people that want to get into makeup artistry and get into the industry or makeup artists already. I would love to do a video just focused on that because I have so much to say. I've also did loads of random courses. Patty sent me to Paris to train with Makeup Atelier, which is an amazing brand. We've trained with Illamasqua. I've trained as well in special effects. I have touched on loads of different things and I think it's really good to do that as well because you kind of then get a feel for what part of makeup you actually want to get into. At the start, I wanted to get into special effects, but as the years went on, then I started growing in more kind of the creative and the more pretty makeup. But I would really, really like to get into more kind of theater work and creative work and things 
things like that. So, okay, so uh, someone asked, do you have any tips for doing your brows? Okay, I'm just gonna do this one quickly because I'm gonna do a brow tutorial, but I've started to realize that I am so particular and everything has to be perfect or I can't settle. And I think that might be down to me actually painting and stuff that everything just needs to be to perfection. And it's a curse for me, especially with eyebrows because I could spend an hour on eyebrows easily and I don't like them then because they're too overdone. So what I've been doing recently, start my makeup off with my brows and I start by doing the concealer underneath to sharpen up the brow and then very, very lightly going into the brow just to give a bit of shade. So it gives you more of a softer brow and also saves me a lot of time. Okay, so someone asked me, do I have any piercings? Yes, I do have loads. I have five on this side and four on this side. I have my belly button done, but it came out and I also have my tongue done, which I need to take out because it's bugging me now when I look at videos of myself talking. It's only till now that I've actually noticed how horrendous it is. I don't like tongue piercings. I got it done when I was younger and I have a weird attachment to it that I can't take it out, but I really don't like it and it's coming out soon. And I know I'm gonna look back at these videos in a couple of years and be like, no, Kira. Okay, this question's really long, so I'm gonna break it up a little bit. So what are your favorite eyeshadow singles and palettes? Okay, my favorite palettes, Violet Voss, Holy Grail, the Modern Renaissance palette by Anastasia. I'm obsessed with the new Inglot Italian Kiss collection. I have so many different palettes that I love, but they are the ones that I dip into a lot. Singles then, so I love the Makeup Atelier Paris single eyeshadows, they're so pigmented. I love Makeup Forever ones, I love the Inglot ones, and I love Sugar Pill. What are your favorite makeup brush brands and brushes? Okay, my favorite makeup brush brand and brushes is Zoeva. Literally, without a doubt, I use 90% of Zoeva brushes in my brush belt now and they are great quality. What advice would you give to someone starting out in makeup? Okay, so I've spoke a lot about getting into makeup there. So I'm gonna say social media when it comes to a makeup artist is number one. So you need to work your ass off on your social media. I know when you're starting off doing makeup, it is so cringy to take selfies and post them up. You're thinking everyone's judging you, but who cares? Do it. You're going to get publicity out of that. Now that's obviously for people that are starting into makeup and also artists already, but starting into makeup, I know you're probably not confident enough to do that, but I promise just keep going with it and you'll get better and better and better. And it's really good to document your whole progression with your makeup skills. So I'm so glad that I posted all them ugly pictures back in the day, because now I can look back and be like, Oh my God, hard work really does pay off. Watch loads of YouTube videos, teach yourself as much as you can. And then if you can go do a makeup course, starting off into makeup, this is the main thing I think. I never said no till one job. Even if it was free, I never said no. I did everything I could. And see by not saying no, it makes you very, very hardworking. And it also opens a lot of people's eyes to how determined you are, how hardworking you are, how reliable you are. Even now, I'm still getting jobs with people that I worked with back then. And I probably wasn't that good of an artist back then, but they seen potential in me and they seen how reliable I was and how hardworking I was and that I wouldn't let them down. So I've got the jobs ever since. And what are your top tips on building on your social media? So. At the start, I literally was just sitting down and doing my makeup for fun, to play around, to get more experimental, to build up my skills. So I used to do that at the start and then I would take some selfies and I would post them. They weren't being recognized very much. They weren't getting much acknowledgement. Instagram wasn't really a big thing back then. But as I progressed on and on and on, I started to learn that hashtagging brands and hashtagging different social media sites really gets you recognized and also tagging the actual picture too. So I do all my hashtagging underneath my picture and then I'll tag all the brands and stuff that I use on the picture as well. And let's be real, people want to see flaky pictures. So think about your following, think about the content they want to see. Think about when you're posting something, is this going to attract your audience? Is this going to attract the people that follow you or potential new followers? Also themes are amazing on Instagram. I'm obsessed with particular themes and I find I always gauge more towards really cool themed Instagrams. I don't like Instagrams that have no structure to them. I like to see a constant theme and I think that that's really really attractive to an audience so definitely keep that in mind I think it's a little bit harder when you do makeup because everything has to be different and there's always different colors involved and stuff but what I find is really good for me is having a white background a lot of the time in my pictures so that's what I find quite attractive with my page as a makeup artist if I didn't do makeup I'd be going for that cool gray vintagey kind of theme but I can't do that because I do makeup so okay so someone said hey 
Hey Kira, I absolutely love your makeup looks and was just wondering what gives you confidence to wear colourful eyeshadow. Okay, so for me, when I go out for a night out, I don't wear colour, which is kind of weird as a makeup artist. I should be taking advantage of the fact that I can, but I do love playing with colour. I love when I'm just sitting down and doing a makeup look solely for Instagram or for YouTube. I just absolutely love to just play with my colours. Halloween is literally my favourite time of year because you just dip into the colours that you wouldn't dare to dip into when you're working on a client or when you're going somewhere yourself. What my advice is for people afraid of colour is lay out all the my shadows that you're a little bit afraid of and then just dip and dab and play around. I think it's better when you can see everything in front of you so that's why I always set out all my makeup to perfection before I do a look because I just like to see it there and then I kind of just start to work my way until a look that I didn't really have planned. Take out those colours that you've been afraid of and just try it out. Do it when you're not going anywhere and see how it goes. If it doesn't work out right, who cares? Take it all off. It's just makeup. But if you are going somewhere and you're not comfortable with a blue smoky eye, please don't do that. Okay, so this is a really good question. Where do you see yourself in five years? So I do have loads of goals now that I want to work towards. Five year plan, I just don't have goals that far enough, especially with my career because in the makeup industry, things are really unpredictable. You don't know what jobs are going to come your way. You don't know where you're going to have to go to do a particular job. So it's really, really hard to actually predict that far in the future. But I do have lots of goals that I want long term. I'd love to move out of Ireland and go to a city. I do have things in mind what I want to do. So yeah, that's a massive goal of mine. One of my big visions for the future, I want to end up living in New York. I want to live in Manhattan. I want to have a really nice apartment and just literally love life. I just, oh, I just love New York so, so much. And yeah, so the day that I have my gorgeous house in New York or apartment, I will definitely pinch myself. I want to work on my YouTube channel and for it to be really successful. I want to just branch into other businesses and just work with lots of amazing brands. And yeah, that's really what I'm focused on right now. And that's my goals at the minute, but I don't really have that five year plan. Who in the YouTube makeup industry do you look up to and who inspires you? So I've loads of different beauty gurus that I love. I love Jamie Genevieve. I love Desi Perkins. I love Manny MUA. I love Jeffree Star. I love so many. I love Sarah He. I'm not pronouncing that right, but I absolutely love all of them. But someone I just absolutely love is Patrick Star. He's just such an inspiration. He's so much fun and he works with his family. He has his two brothers working for him and I have my sister working for me. So I really relate to him and I just literally love his personality so, so much. He's so inspiring. I love James Charles too. I know I'm forgetting so many. Favourite Snapchatters. So I actually love a lot of non-makeup related Snapchatters. I do love the makeup related ones, but I really love watching the Irish ones because I feel like they're more relatable to me and I just love seeing what they're doing about their day and everything. I love James Kavna, I love So Sue, I love Makeup Fairy Pro, I love Just Jordan, I love Aideen Murphy. These are all Irish ones because I literally watch all the Irish ones. I love watching Ellie Kelly, I love watching Kaylee. I think my favourite Snapchatter and YouTuber actually is Retro Flame and she's not makeup related at all but I just love her. I love her style, I love everything about her content. I think she's really motivational as well. I relate to her a lot when it comes to business and career and as well she lives in New York City she's living the life I want to live so I definitely Retro Flame is one of my favourite YouTubers and Snapchatters what is your favourite TV show? so I actually don't watch a lot of TV like I watch YouTube and I watch some TV shows if I'm sitting down to like eat or something but I don't really watch loads of TV but my favourite shows are you are gonna laugh I love Impractical Jokers literally I lol so much watching it. I cannot stop laughing watching it and I never laugh at TV. I cringe at that. I love Friends. And then obviously I love like Kardashians and stuff like that but I love old school like kind of comedy American TV shows. I just love them. So yeah. What are the things you're passionate about? Okay so I'm really passionate obviously like by watching this you're gonna know that I'm passionate about trying to help people. Like I love that I'm able to sit and speak to this camera and 
hopefully help a lot of people. I'm also very passionate about animals. I'm obsessed with animals. I literally cannot cope when I see a video of animal cruelty. Like I bawl my eyes out. Obviously everyone knows my passion is makeup but I also love painting too. I literally would love to get back into painting. I would love down the line when I have my own place that I'm gonna live for the rest of my life. I would love like an art studio and just to sit down and paint all the time. Like that would be my dream. Have you had lip fillers? Yes, I have had lip fillers. I've had them four times now over the space of a year and a half or so. I go to Martina Collins in Belfast. She's amazing. If anyone is considering getting their lips done, please go to Martina because she will look after you and she knows how to make you not look like you've gone overboard. I hope no one thinks that of me because I don't actually think my lips are that fake looking. I really just wanted to kind of fill the areas that I normally overline because it looks really bad I think when you've overlined your lips. My lips are quite prominent so it was really noticeable so I just wanted to fill that area so that I actually didn't have to overline them as much and Martina did a really good job of doing that for me. Okay so that's all for now. I do have other questions and if you want a part two to the Q&A I will be more than happy to do that but I thought it's long enough so, so I hope you guys enjoyed that and you learned a little bit more about me and got to know me a little bit more and let me know what you guys thought of the video and also let me know about some more videos that you would like to see because I really love just sitting down and chatting to you guys and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Also please don't forget to subscribe. I got so many subscribers in my last video. Let's keep it going. Thank you so so much to everyone and I will see you in my next video. Bye!